Uh, you know, obviously uh, intense day, a lot of enthusiasm, um, a lot of passion out there. Um, guys flying around. I really like what I see. Um, you know, we'll look at the tape and find out, you know, obviously it was a good place for the offense, good place for the defense. And, um, you know, we had a couple live situations, you know, a lot of FUD, you know, trying to stay off the ground and make sure we can make it through 15 days. Um, we don't lose it all in one day, but, um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of contact today. You find any backups on your offensive line? Um, you know, until we watch the tape, I would say no. Um, you know, you have to watch the tape to find out. But I'd say, you know, it's still a work in process. And when you talk about it, it's hard for freshmen and sophomores to come in and play early. It's, you know, just as hard after the first day in pads to say you got a, you know, a backup offensive line that's ready to go. Um, but, you know, the one guy you got to say, you know, you've been impressed with just because it's so fast is, is J.D. Drake, really. Um, he's in there playing right tackle, and, and uh, he doesn't look like he's a freshman to start off with. He's not playing like a freshman. That's the one guy I'd say that you know if he just keeps going, um, you know, he's, he's going to you know he's going to challenge uh, some people in there that maybe have been here for a couple of years. What are your impressions of Chris Clark so far? You know, Chris Clark, he's been good, man. He's got soft hands. You know, um, I'll look at his run game. It's it's easier to see him when it's wide open, like seven on seven. You know, you watch Pat Skelly and, and you watch him run down the field, stretch the field. He's got soft hands. He can run. And, uh, you know, I, I'll hold off. I told him the other day, he texted me asking me, Coach, what it look like today? And I said, well, I, you know, you got to get better at blocking because I saw a couple. But you got to watch the tape to see the blocking if he did the right thing. But, I, you know, I see a lot of good things out of Chris Clark. Is Devin Edwards a tight end again? He's a tight end again. How do you know How do you know all these things? You know? I, I always listen to Chris yeah. Peake. He tells me everything. He does. Well, good. That's a good thing you got Chris in your pocket. Uh, yeah, we moved Devin back over. Um, you know, we watched him for, I guess, maybe one day on defense and just felt like, you know, we needed a tight end. We, you know, we wanted, we didn't want to make it too soon. I wanted to give Coach Partridge a chance just to see him out there doing stuff defensively. But, you know, we just, you know, I just feel like with the depth we've got on defense right now, he needs to go to offense and help us there. So... Can Chris do some of the same things Scott did in the offense? No question about it. No doubt about it. Chris Clark's an athlete, you know. Um, you know, we just got to get him as sound as, as Scott. You said depth on defense. I mean, do you are you confident you, you'll encourage by what you've seen just out of the, the guys in the front? The, yeah, the front. I mean, I feel like we got you know some depth up there more than we've had in the past. Um, you know, when you just look, you know, you're rotating, you know, Patrick Jones in there, and you know, Deslin's out there now, but you know, Kazon Pugh. As, you know, in the first you know, some good things. You know, we'll look at the tape and see. I'm sure there's mistakes being made. You know, Keyshawn Camp is really playing well up there. So I feel like we've got some young guys in there. We've got numbers, at least, to work with as long as we stay healthy. How important was it for you to move Salim around and get him some work, you know, at middle linebacker, too, so he's familiar with three spots? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's, uh, it's always good to have those guys play a couple different spots and no different spots because you're going to always play the best three linebackers. So, you know, if Salim's playing the money and all of a sudden Mike goes down and he's your next best Mike, then you, you move him in there just to get your best guys instead of playing the backup Mike who maybe is your fifth or sixth guy uh, that you really want to put in the game. So um, that's, you know, that's always good for him. And he's, you know, he's a football player. He loves the game and he's in there screaming. You know, it's loud. We got music going and the D-line's not listening to his calls and he's getting mad. And I see him here, you know, throwing a fist. Like, it's all right, call. Um, so he's, he's having fun in there. Do you expect to get uh, Demar and Quinton back anytime soon? Um, yes and no. How about that? <laughs> so take that as you want. Maybe one's yes and maybe one's no. How about that? And no uh, embellishment. Injury over here. I'm gonna give. We got to give him a nickname here. <laughs> Who else got a good question? You um, are you still kind of? <laughs> Not to yours. Huh? This is. I can't guarantee it's a good question, but are you still deciding on Maurice French? What side of the ball you want to use? No, him? we're not deciding on him at all. He's he's going to play both ways for us. We think he he's a talented kid. You know, um, you know, we recruited him as a corner. We needed him on offense. Move him over there. He's really, I would say, getting sixty percent on defense right now, fully on offense. He played both ways today, so we're not deciding. I had EJ put in the. Uh, the spring guide there, you know, that he has both. He's going to play both for us.